So here we are looking at the uh, Seiko A5 6.5 by 55 with the bore scope. Right now we're looking at the follower of the magazine. And as we continue in towards the beginning of the barrel, uh, you will see that in the middle of the picture we have a mirror that is angled 45 degrees. So it helps us to look at the rifling and uh, with a 90 degree angle straight into the side of the rifling. And uh, around the mirror you will see actually what the camera is seeing uh, pointed straight forward in, into the, to the barrel. So here we have a greasy section. This is the beginning of the barrel or the, end, the back end of the barrel. And it's full of grease from previous owner's cleanings. Uh, this yellow stuff and shiny stuff is grease that is on the back plane of the barrel. Now this rifle has uh, has had 48 shots through it since I uh, cleaned it thoroughly with ThoroClean a few months ago. Just for reference it's 48 shots and now we enter the, the chamber. So this is the side of the inside of the chamber looks pretty rough um, if you're not familiar with bore scope you will uh, it's very easy to um, overreact when you s see this for the first time because it looks generally looks quite horrible but it's not as bad as it seems most barrels i've looked through uh, more than 10 now have uh, looked very similar so it's pretty rough when you when you magnify things in the chamber uh, and now we come to the shoulder this is the beginning of the shoulder this is the shoulder itself and we are now in the throat or the uh, neck <coughs> of the case is resting on this uh, piece here and this line is the uh, the angled uh, kind of when the diameter of the the bore becomes slightly smaller. So if you don't trim your brass, sooner or later you're gonna jam the case, uh, case mouth into this small angle here and you're gonna essentially crimp the bullet inside the, the barrel, which will cause uh, excessive uh, pressures, of course. So that's not good. That's why you're, you want to keep your uh, brass trimmed to a, a good length. And this area is basically free bore where the bullet has no support whatsoever and then we enter this section here which is the lead where the angle uh, or the diameter of the the barrel kind of gets slightly more smaller still and this is also the beginning of the of the rifling so this is uh, yeah one groove there's another one and you can see that we have micro cracks here because of uh, shots being fired and uh, quite high pressure in this part of the barrel. The pressure is uh, very high before the uh, <coughs> bullet really picks up speed through the barrel. And the bluish, bluish grayish stuff uh, you can see all, all over the place here is like uh, corroded uh, copper. And uh, you also have like these golden shiny parts here, which is uh, basically the bullet has been smeared and left this residue inside the barrel. Now after this, not so much interesting things happen actually. When you go down the bore, you're not traveling down the bore, you see some uh, stuff here and there. Um, as a bullet picks up speed and the the pressure drops you will you don't see any real micro cracks anymore because the, the high pressure has gone away and yeah here and there you can see this kind of debris this is uh, i don't know some uh, pieces of hair lying in the bore here sometimes you can have my uh, cracks and you can have pitting you can have rust you can have um, so essentially pieces of metal missing from
from inside the bore if you have rust and so on. If you have neglected your uh, maintenance of the barrel, it can look really gnarly. I've seen a few barrels like a 300 Weatherby looks looked terrible. It was actually missing pieces, big big chunks of, of material inside the barrel. But if you don't have a bore scope, you are happily unaware of all this stuff. If you look through the barrel from the uh, chamber and towards the muzzle and you point the muzzle towards some light source like most of us do when you want to check the the, the barrel you will see some it looks shiny and yeah it looks great but essentially you don't see anything when you do that because you don't have any magnification and you are getting fooled by the shininess of the bore where in reality it looks like this or even much much worse and you will still not see it in doing it that way so continue traveling down the bore and we are going to get towards the muzzle soon not really much happening here the the color and the the uh, characteristics of the of the corrosion uh, changes uh, down the bore as you can see and eventually we will hit the the muzzle and the um, the crown which we can inspect also using the bore scoop. Here we have the end of the barrel. This angle, angled part here is the then the crown. And yeah, I'm trying to rotate this now. It's a bit hard to do this in a good way, but as you can see, the crown looks pretty good. So there is no issues here with the crown. There is no need to re-crown it. Now let's clean this with uh, with Thoroclean and come back and have another look with a with a uh, clean barrel. Okay, so we're back after cleaning the bore with uh, Thoroclean. Thoroclean is a uh, mild abrasive liquid that you uh, uh, apply to a brush and you pull the brush back and forth through the bore a few times, and it will remove most anything that you want inside the bore there is no ammonia smell you can do it at the kitchen table basically and you will not upset anyone so when we enter the bore or the chamber you can already see that it's nice and shiny and here is the uh, shoulder this is the shoulder now we are in the neck portion of the chamber here we come to this uh, angled portion here, which uh, can cause an issue if you have uh, brass that is too too long. Entering the free bore, you can see the machining marks from the uh, when the barrel was manufactured. This Seiko is around; it's from around uh, 1987 or so. So, and <coughs> here we enter the lead, the angled, slightly angled portion of the barrel where the rifling starts F you go in gently from zero rifling up to full depth and as you can see we do see the micro cracks and so on but it's a totally different story this time there is no brown grayish residue and the bore looks uh, yeah, basically brand new almost and then you know not so much happens until the uh, end of the on the barrel uh, one thing to note with this bore scope is that it doesn't have autofocus, so actually the uh, the distance from the mirror to the uh, to the wall here is very critical. So, for example, if we do like this, it's the biggest di uh, distance. It's kind of out of focus, and if we move it to here, it's uh, yeah, more focused. But anyway, you can adjust that the the distance of the mirror to the uh, the camera itself depending on which uh, diameter of the bore you're gonna go and have a look at. And then we just slide down the barrel. No more strands of hair or anything. You just have a very slight coating of CLP oil that I put on the last patch before I pulled, took some dry patches through it. Oh, there is one piece. And we approach the uh, crown 
again so looks pretty good there is some minor pitting here at the end you can see it's uh, it's been rusting a little bit maybe and uh, it's no big deal it looks uh, looks very good especially from for being a 1987 or so rifle okay thank you for watching <laughs>